So we had already knew like, man, okay, we we're on the ground maybe less than 10 minutes and the sniper had already zeroed in on us. And he wasn't gonna go home empty handed, so he took that motherfucker out. All right, we're rolling. What's up, Raymond? What's up? Thanks for being here, brother. Um, Thank you. Just started off, so uh, why don't you just introduce yourself and talk to me about your, uh, your upbringing, where you're right. from. Uh, my name is Raymond Ramirez. In the Army, everybody called me Ramron. Uh, my first team leader was a white guy from Arkansas, I guess, which is easier for him to just call me Ramron. Name stuck, and that's what I've been ever since. Um, U.S. Army Infantry, um, served from 2005 to 2008. I grew up in Riverside, California. Um, grew up in a small neighborhood called Arlanza. Um, it's, uh, I grew up, I mean, obviously grew up poor, but you know, my, my parents tried the hardest not to let us know we grew up poor. Mm. Um, and both your parents together? Yeah. 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 My, uh, my dad, unfortunately passed away February 22nd. Mm. Um, Sorry so, to hear that. yeah, man. that's been a little rough lately. How'd he pass? Uh, just long battle with diabetes, man. Mm. You know, he never took care of himself. Just went out like a rock star. You yeah, know, so, yeah. So Did you grew up in like a, uh, is it like a gang neighborhood? A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, like that's the gang name is Arlanza. Um, mm. You know, my friends, um, my wife's family, <laughs> they're all from, they're all from the neighborhood. Um, her dad, you know, rest in peace as well. Mm. Kind of got this tattoo. Yeah. You know. They used to call him Ghost, so I just kind of got mm. that. How'd you, uh, you never got jumped in? No, man. Um, I, I, uh, my older brother, he was always a tagger, really, really well known, um, really good. And I mean, just phenomenal artist, you know, from when he was young, man. And so I kind of followed in his footsteps and then, um, that's what I did, and then it kind of went into that tag banging era, you know, mm -hmm. and so kind of slipped into that, unfortunately. Um, like, I was the smartest dumb kid you ever, you would ever meet, man, because, like, I did good in school, but always made, like, dumb decisions. Ended up at a, at a community high school with just the worst of the worst kids. Mm. But I mean, it kind of worked out in the end, you know, because I mean, I was set to go to the Navy, ended up just going to the, to the Army. Wait, so you got kicked out of high school? Got kicked out of two high schools. What did you do? <sighs> I got into a pretty bad fight the first high school, um, got expelled. But I was a good kid, so, so I had teachers that went to bat for me. So I ended up going to a pretty good continuation school. You know, instead of just being completely out, having to figure it out, I ended up at a pretty good high school, mm. uh, Alvord High School. You know, the teachers really cared there, man. You were there for four <laughs> hours a day, but, like, they knew the kids that would show up in the same clothes, you know. They would know the kids that were a little hungry, you know. They kind of like, oh, hey, here's a burrito, or hey, you know, here's this and that. So, you know, I was, like, probably, like, four or five months away from graduating, and my program ended because I was on probation for graffiti, you know? So um, they were like, okay, your, your last option is this school that's sponsored by the County Riverside across from the juvenile hall. I show up there and I really had the credits to graduate. So I was there for like a month, got done with school. But by that time I was already deft to go in the Navy, the mm -hmm. delayed entry program, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much you sign up, you do the ASVAB, Everything's good to go. You just got to wait till you get your diploma. And I was only 16, so just wait at least until I was 17. That shit came crashing down. Because of all the shit you got into? Because all the stupid stuff that, you know, like I was already a different person, right? Yeah. I had already left that behind, but I mean, everything has consequences. So, right, right. you know, I had a girlfriend at the time. And she was set to go to the Army. And she convinced me, like, hey, you know, maybe you should talk to the Army recruiter because the Navy didn't work. The Marine guy didn't even let me in the office because I already had a tattoo like an idiot at 16. And the Army guy mm. was like, come on down, man. Come <laughs> on down. So he was just like, hey, whatever. You know, like, you're good to go. And then I was like, okay. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like, oh, man, I'll just be a truck driver. Kick back in the yeah. Army. Show up. And the little old lady that 
did my contract was like, man, you know, just you look like you'd be good infantry. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that? She goes, oh, you just you just train and party, train and party. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there, you know, yeah, just just wet behind the ears. I was like, cool. You know, what, and, uh, what, uh, what, in, what, what, how did you end up just, just getting to a recruiting office? Like, what inspired you to go there? Dude, at, at continuation school, they're there every day, bro. Mm. Every day, they're all there in their uniforms, starched down, you know, everything. The little pregnant girls, the cholas, they're all like, mm -hmm. oh, so you're looking at the girls, looking at them with such awe, and you're like, oh. Maybe that's the answer, you know, <laughs> because because obviously this, you know, this, you know, you know, this gang banging shit isn't really like getting my attention. So I'm just like, well, maybe I'll do that. So, of course, you know, the Navy guy knew of my brothers, whatever. So I was like, cool. And he helped me go, you know, and he helped me uh, take the pre ASVAB, study, go to MEPS and all that stuff. So I was like, cool. But when that fell through. Like I said, I had that girlfriend, and she was like, oh, you should talk to the Army recruiter. And they were just eating up kids at that time, man. You know, mm. I wasn't even of age, and he was like, oh, you know, but the Navy don't want you. The Army will take you. So I was like, "Yeah, let's do it, you know, because I didn't want to stay there. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to stay there, man. You know, my buddies were getting locked up, going to rehab, this and that. My parents, you know, we had lost their house, so they were in Fontana now, and I just knew that I had to get out of there, man. Yeah, yeah. I had to get out of that situation. So you ended up, uh, you ended up picking infantry. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah man. Like uh, the little old lady was so convincing, man. She had the, you know, the nice white hair, the big glasses. Yeah. She was like, "Yeah, man, my husband was infantry for twenty five years, and he absolutely loved it." So I was like, "Cool." Mm. I didn't know anything what infantry was. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the army. I was yeah. just like, "It's something, right?" Yeah, yeah. So you end up you end up doing a tour, a uh, combat tour overseas, yeah. right? Yes, sir. Uh, to Iraq. Um, but before that, we were talking earlier. You were talking about getting in a little bit of trouble. Was this before? Did you get in trouble before you went on your tour? Uh, yeah, man. Um, it seems like they call it Fort Hood for a reason, man. Because <laughs> it was like, I mean, you kind of hear about it now on the news and all that stuff, but. It was the hood, man, because you had like you had the you had the East Gate, which is Rancier. Like, you, you, I mean, you could call it Compton, you could call it uh, South Central, you could call it whatever you want. It was just as soon as you hit that gate, those prostitutes and just pawn shops, as far as you can see. The other gate went into like the nicer part of town and stuff like that. So. It was just real easy, man. It was just real easy to get in trouble. And like I said, I'm the smartest dumb kid you'll ever meet. So, you know, I, um, moving up, learn my job, doing great, you know, like expanding my horizons. And then, yeah, man, like the last four day weekend before we dip out, they gave us a, uh, a, a piss test. So I'm like, cool, go home, party come back and another piss test 100 percent piss test they told us so i'm just like shit right because you know amongst each other you talk to like it's never 100 percent. you know you, you have a hell of a good chance mm. so i'm like okay instead of just probably went to my squad leader and be like hey man i'll fucking you know he probably would have done something i i mean i'm positive he would have done something you know mm -hmm. but i didn't i think it was between 25 or 30 all over the battalion piss hot man yeah. So it was a big hit. They were pissed, man. They were pissed. What were they pissing hot for? <sighs> All kinds of All shit. All kinds or? of shit. I felt bad for like some of the people because like, you know, they were pissing hot for like heroin, meth, and all this shit. Like I pissed hot for coke, right? Because mm. I knew I did coke. But a lot of these dudes, they were doing ecstasy. Mm. No idea. Like maybe it was their first time, but they had no idea that shit's cut with everything under mm. the sun, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, I deployed as a fuzzy, you know, no rank, no nothing, um, <laughs> coming off of injury. So, you know, shit was kind of wild, you know, and, um, you know, right. like, you know, like I deployed and I had a saw with no guts and, and I had a tie down with 550 cord. And they told me, don't worry, once you get there, the unit that you're relieving, 
you're gonna swap out saw, so don't even worry about it. It's like, <laughs> okay, Ro- wow. Roger Sart, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So talk to me about that the deployment, man. What was it like for you? You know, entering a combat fucking zone, first time at war. Like, yeah. talk to me about that. Um, I I think uh, I think the army does a pretty good job of um of like the the initial because you know you spend two weeks in Kuwait acclimating right mm-hmm. you know weather whatnot and then you know like we we fly in a uh, we were stationed in southeast Baghdad and it, I think it was another like two or two two or three weeks where like the unit that we're relieving it is a debriefing you know like our upwards you know like our staff sergeants first sergeant so forth so you're kind of doing nothing you know you're kind of just getting used to you're talking to the dudes that are leaving, you know, and, um, you know, you're kind of just, just, just swallowing everything, you know, and then, you know, of course, fucking mortar attacks all the time. So, you know, you're, you're like getting used to that adrenaline, you know, that shit pumping, that shit going, you know, like I hated taking a shower, man. I hate taking a shower because you'd be in the bunker and you see some dude butt ass naked out of the shower running into the freaking bunker you know because i mean it was like a it was like a portable it was just like a, a makeshift shower shit you know so it was just like i was like man i have to take a shower run in there shower real quick you know? yeah come out before the fucking mortars come can you recall the first uh you know was there was there a moment while you were out there uh that that occurred where you're like okay this shit's real like we're really in fucking at war <sighs> I would say it was the day before I got shot, man. The day mm. before I got shot because um, we had gotten reports that there was a sniper moving in in the area. And um, so we're like, okay, you know, and you know, you know, like your leaders being leaders are like, you guys already know what to do, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you guys already know the box method. You don't stay still. You know, you just keep going in a spot, blah, blah. We have our SOP, which was, seven or nine minutes on the ground and then we got to move, you know, like no matter what's happening, what do we got? If we got to snatch this guy up and take him, that's what we're going to do. So you feel kind of confident, like, you know, like in your leaders, right? Because I mean, you know, like all of my leadership, my squad leader and my two team leaders, they had already been overseas, you know, like my squad leader had a silver star from his first tour. So I was like, cool, you know, like I feel safe, right? Like I have your guidance. I'm cool. But the, but the day before I got shot, we met up with these Iraqi police and um, we were supposed to get intel from them and we were supposed to do like a mission with these guys, you know, like they were supposed to give us the intel and then we we're all supposed to roll out and go handle business. And um, things started getting, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of hectic or whatever, you know, like, um, they, they kind of started getting into it or whatever. And then out of nowhere, we just hear this, the freaking uh, bullet just jump off of the Humvee. Jump off the Humvee. Bing! We all get down. We all get behind the Humvee. None of us knew where it came from, right? My freaking squad leader was like, fuck these guys. They don't want our help. Let's get the fuck out of here, right? Like, fuck you guys. We're out. You guys just deal with that shit on your own then. So we get in the Humvees and we just dip. Not even like a minute later. On the radio, hey, you guys gotta turn around. You know, they just took a casualty. So there we go, turn around, and it was and it was their captain, the guy that was giving us the biggest heartache, the headache. He got hit in the head, so he was laying down right there. Mm. I'm like, well, what do you want us to do? This guy's dead. And they're just like, one of their guys. One of their guys. Okay. You know, and they're just like, oh, you're right. Just dip out. You know, go ahead and go ahead and I'll come back to base. So we had already knew like, man, okay, we we're on the ground maybe less than 10 minutes and the sniper had already zeroed in on us and he wasn't going to go home empty handed. So he took that motherfucker out, mm. right? Because the most shady of them all was the Iraqi police, right? right? They were the most shady. So that was the day before, you know? So when we get back and everybody's like, fuck, you guys took fire. That's took sniper fire. And we were like, yep. And yeah, man. The next day, we had our mission, go out, get canceled, come back. They're like, no, stay fucking ready to go. Got some higher-ups are going to come with you guys. 
So of course they were captains and above, right? They come with us. Oh yeah, we're gonna go talk to this fucking chic or whatever, the dude in charge of the town. So we go there and uh, I think I think when I read my 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 report or my award or whatever it was, you know, the paperwork that comes, it said we were on the ground for 40 minutes, or our SOP was seven to nine minutes. But every time my squad leader would be like, hey, we gotta get the fuck out of here. They're like, shut the fuck up. You know, this is our mission. You just fucking stand out there and do what you're told and keep security because we're not done here yet. So the clock just kept ticking and ticking and ticking. But, you know, you're a fucking private, you know. (laughs) I mean, I didn't know the difference between, hey, we should be gone or, hey, we should still be here. Mm -hmm. You know, so just standing there and doing my little box method and, yeah, man, I just... Just like a blink of an eye, man. You know, like uh, my our other team leader, which was my ex team leader, he's like, Ramron, what are you doing over here? I'm like, this, you know, I'm just, I'm just where I'm supposed to be at, Sarn. He's like, no, you see Diaz over there? I'm like, Roger Sarn. And he's like, he's like, why is Diaz with your squad and you're over here with my squad? I'm like, mm. I don't know, Sarn. He's just like. How about you guys switch? And I'm just like, Roger, that's Sarn. So he goes over to Sarn Green. He goes, Sarn Green. He goes, what's up? He goes, he goes, I'm gonna swap him out. Roger Sarn. So Diaz, Diaz, you know, he's a little bit more, you know, better soldier than I was. So he kind of hightailed back, right? So we kind of go on passing. And I go. And um I was just trying to avoid a puddle, man, trying to avoid a puddle. And I just took my step and I opened my eyes and I'm on a knee. And that was when I freaking knew I looked around, I didn't see anybody, and I was like, fuck. They're playing for keeps, man. I was like, shit, you know, shit just got real, you know, and I didn't know what had happened. It didn't hurt, you know, I wasn't in any pain, but I just looked around and I didn't see anybody, and I was like, Something happened. Something happened. Yeah, man. I just see my my fucking team leader peek his head out because he was in an alleyway. He's mm-hmm. like, "What are you doing?" I don't know. Yeah. So you so you you didn't even know you were shot. No, not at all, man. It didn't it didn't hurt, you know. Like well, before you took a knee, did you feel any like any impact? Or, I felt like, like a push. Yeah. You know, but it just seemed like it was like. A, yeah, just like a, oh, shit, you know, like, but, and then I just felt like I blinked, you know, like I blinked and I kind of looked to my left because as I was walking, I seen everybody, right? We were all um, staggered, mm-hmm. staggered on the street, you know, and they were inside of this building talking to this dude and yeah, man, I was just, I can see him, I seen his face and as he's yelling at me, it's getting louder and I'm just like, oh, shit, and he's just like, hey the fuck are you doing? And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And he's just like, get over here. So I go to get up and I couldn't get up. And I was like, oh shit. I'm like, what's going on? I go to get up and I can't get up. And I'm like, I'm like yeah, I'm like, I can't, I can't go. I don't know. He's like, get the fuck over here. We just took sniper fire. So by this time, my arm is dead. I had my saw on like a wolf tail, right? Like a D clip with, mm-hmm. the, with the 550 cord. So my saw is hanging. It's muddy, like I said. I try to avoid that damn puddle. And um, I'm just like, okay, you got to go. So I start duck walking, right? Mm-hmm. I duck through the puddle. My saw is hanging. And he just, he's trying to talk to me while I'm going. And I'm just trying to concentrate. He goes, what's wrong? What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm like, I, just, I can't feel my left side. It's just completely dead. I told him, you know, it's hard. It's hard to even move my leg. And he's just like, what the fuck's going on? He just shoved his hand in there, man. And he, and he didn't shove it out. Like, I'm like, I would assume he felt the blood. He just left it there. But he had to get on his radio. He just mm. pulled his hand down. It's on his radio. And he's just like, hey, Ramrod's hit. And I'm like, I'm, like, I'm Ramrod. What the fuck do you mean, Ramrod's hit? Oh. You know? Damn. So, yeah, man. Like At that point is when you realize, oh, fuck, I'm shot. I'm shot. Shit got real. You know, like, because even the day before, that shit, that shit didn't seem real, right? We see old, we see old boy laid out on the floor, but I'm like, I'm like, well, that's their life, right? That's, you know, like, 
you know, like he must have did something, right? Like I haven't done anything to these people yet, right? Mm -hmm. He did something to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you know, and then yeah, man, he just, you know, he's on the radio trying to be as professional, professional as he can, right? Because yeah. I'm a soldier, right? I'm I'm like the youngest dude in the company, right? So he's just like, fuck, man, and you know, he just he just says, yeah, he's hit, man, he's hit. And in my mind, all I could think was like, shit, I gotta call my mom, right? You know, because I don't like <laughs> calling home. You know, I didn't yeah. like it. I did because it was just a lie. Every time you called home, you just lied through your teeth, right? Yeah. I didn't like doing that. So, yeah, man, they called medic over, and we're the same age. Mm -hmm. His helmet's all crooked, and he's just like, oh, what am I supposed to do to this kid? You know? Yeah. Half ass bandages me up and get uh, on my way, man. So you got hit, and then you ended up going to. Um Describe what the what, what 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 was it like from getting to that point to 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 where they took you because eventually you went to the hospital, right? Yeah, I mean the whole thing was a shit show because, you know, like uh, as far as my platoon, like we did what we had to do, right? You know, they pop off smoke, they get me in the Bradley, you know, uh, my freaking uh, badass platoon sergeant, he's walking me through. Everything that I'm going to feel, right? You know, he's talking to me. He's like, look, man, your breathing's going to slow. Your adrenaline is going to drop. And that shit's going to burn. It's going to burn like nothing's ever burned before. You just got to bite through it. Because he's like, if you get morphine now, you ain't going to get morphine in the hospital. So just trust me, you're going to want the morphine in the hospital. So I'm like, fuck. I'm like, okay, right? I'm just going to do what I'm told. And we're just hauling ass back, man. Don't give a shit about roadside bombs at that point, right? We're just high telling back. And then in his infinite wisdom, the Sergeant Major's like, hey, I'm halfway to the main base. Give him to me. I'll take him back. So I can hear my, my platoon sergeant just raising hell like, this is stupid, right? Like, why are we going to stop? Let's get this kid back. We don't know his injuries. Mm -hmm. Right, because it was a sniper. They just threw me in the Bradley and we high tilt back. They hadn't even taken off your vest mm -hmm. yet, huh? No, well, it was his yeah. bandage, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So, but where'd you get hit in the shoulder? Right in my shoulder, oh, okay. in and out. Yeah. So we just, it was a direct order, man. Go show up. They get me out. Star majors is there, like put him in my Humvee. I'm like a fucking Humvee. I'm already in a Bradley. Like what the fuck, you know? Mm -hmm. But whatever, I mean, I mean, what, what was said or what that decision was, I mean, I'll never know, right? Private, yeah. you know? So I could see my squad leader just, man, like, he just furious, man. He's bright red, you know, like, fuck, man. And he just says, I'm sorry, man, but you got to go. So I'm like, shit, right? And this whole time I'm just like, fuck, man, like, shit's not going the way we trained, right? The way it's supposed to go, like, this is stupid. Right. right, the sergeant major wants to make a grand entrance with me. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. You know, and like driving through this main fucking highway, which, you know, you know, shit always pops off, right? Because they know you're going to fucking drive down the highway to get back to the main base. Mm. But whatever, man. By that point, the, the, the pain is just taking over and I'm just in the back like, fuck, whatever, right? If that didn't kill me, then whatever. Just make it fast. Whatever. You yeah. know, I'm just... So you started feeling that pain that you're oh, fucking... Oh, 100%, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just burn. Just burn. I couldn't feel my arm, but it was just burning my, my chest and my back, and I just felt the burn, man. You know, I could feel the blood starting to trickle th through the bandage, and I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, can't believe it, dude. The kid that left the hood, is a, you know, is the first one fucking hit on this fucking, you know? Mm. I'm just like, man. At any point, did you... Did you uh, did it go through your head that you might not make it? No, I don't think so, man. Like, I don't know. It's weird, you know. Like to me, I, I just I all I could think about was fuck. I gotta call my mom. You know, like damn it, right? Like the one thing I I wanted to avoid this whole tour. Like I didn't think about death or nothing. <laughs> I was like I just don't want to have to call my mom and let her know some shit. And yeah, man, we make it back. And I'm just like I can walk, and they're like, no, get on a gurney. It's like, whatever, right? Do your mm -hmm. fucking thing, you know? And yeah, man, that shit, from the moment I laid on that gurney, it was just pain, 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 mm -hmm. you know? They gave me the morphine, and like 10 seconds later, 
because it already cauterized. Mm -hmm. They're just like, we got to open it up. We got to clean that shit. We got to clean that as much as we could. So I was like, what? And they were just trying to go through the front and they wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they're like, flip them over. And they're holding me, right? Because I'm like yelling. I'm like yelling because it's so much pain. Mm. They flip me over and they're like, try going through the back, through the entrance. Yeah. Right? And I'm just like, and mind you, I'm butt fucking naked. So I don't know why, <laughs> but they cut your freaking uniform off, right? Yeah. And by that time, my first sergeant's there and they're cutting my shit. And I'm just telling my first sergeant, don't let them cut my boots. Right? Because my mom had just sent me Oakley boots. Mm. I'm like, don't let them, because they're getting ready to cut my freaking laces. I'm like, don't let them right. cut my boots. So my first aren't there and I'm feeling a little better, right? Because it's somebody that I know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, they finally, I can hear go, and they just start bleeding, but they're cleaning it, right? They're mm. cleaning it, just like the morphine wore off, man, nothing. Oh. Just straight fucking pain and then I'm butt ass naked too. So it's just like, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on, you know? So you had a, uh, um, you had an opportunity to go home, right? Well, yeah, man, like, you know, like, uh, that's kind of the first thing where they ask you, like, hey, you know, do you want to go to the green zone? You know, do you want to go to the green zone? And I was like, no, you know, like just the arrogance, the whole like, you know, you're like told the one thing you want to do is finish your tour. Like I said, I'm young. I don't know anything about anything. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, finish my tour, finish my tour, finish my tour. So I was just like, no, you know, I, I want to stay. Okay. <laughs> so like, okay. Wow. You know, so. I, they clean me up, I go to the little med bed or whatever, and and um, my first arm follows me. God bless his soul, man. Like, he comes up, I'm laying down after blah, blah, and he waits till they leave. He waits till they leave, and he gives me like a half hug, and he has a cell phone. He slides it in my blanket, right? He slides it in my blanket, and he whispers me, into my ear in Spanish, right? Because he's a Mexican guy from Texas. And he's like, and he's like, you need to call your parents because the army's gonna fuck it up. Mm. He said, as soon as you get a chance, you need to call home. Call everybody, call your neighbor, call whoever you gotta call, but you gotta call home and let them know you're alive and you're gonna be all right. So they're gonna fuck it up. And they did, you know. They called my dad who, who like didn't even know English and fucking just told them I was hit and that's all the uh, information they had, fuck. you know? So, I do that. My mom's at fucking work, man. And But I had to, right? Mm -hmm. And I just lied. And I was like, Mom, they're going to put me to sleep. So, you know, I got to go. Mm -hmm. Like, I just had to let her know I was fine and I was going to survive. And that was it, man. Mm -hmm. And then just laying there like, what the fuck, man? That must have been really hard for her to have to hang up with you and wonder. Oh, my God. And wonder, like, what's going on with my son, you know? Yeah, because they can't call us. Right. You know, like, we can call them, you know, but I was... Grateful, grateful. My first time, you know, like right away was like, call home, mm -hmm. you know, call home, call your mom. You know, you have to because they're going to be worried. Damn. So eventually you did get the chance to make it home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I was in the hospital two weeks, two weeks. I was, I was there. Like once the swelling went down and they felt like I didn't have to be on antibiotics anymore, they were just like, okay, you know what? Like. You know, like, if you want to stay maybe, like, a few more days, you can stay. But, you know, like, if not, you know, like, your company's, you know, like, your company says that they have a spot for you when you go back. Mm -hmm. So, by that point, I was like, fuck it. I want to go out of there, right? They come. They pick me up in a Humvee. They go back. And they just show me how to maintain it right until it heals. And, um, yeah, man, they're all waiting for me, right? They're all waiting for me back at the company little area and... And uh, my squad leader's like, um, he goes, hey, man, you're, you're scheduled to go to leave in August. But I was able to get everybody to give up their leave. And the earliest they can, we can send you home is the beginning of March. He said, the powers that be said February was too early for you to go home. But I feel like you need to be home with your family. Let your family know you're okay. You know, mm. you need just time to decompress after this shit. You yeah. know, so I was like. Roger Sarn, you know, thank you, you know, I appreciate it. So, um, so yeah, man, spent, spent, um, like two weeks on, on top guard, which is horrible, man, horrible, because it seemed like right after I got hit, you started rocking and rolling, man, like, you know, so you're, I'm sitting there with a the sling, hearing, having to write all this shit down, my boy's getting in contact, 
fight, you know, just shit going down and I'm hearing and getting frustrated, like having to write everything down. Mm. Everything down. I'm like, shit, man. I want to be out there. So once everybody went to sleep, I would I would throw my vest on and just walk around the talk, man. Mm. I started going like this, just trying to get just trying to get better, mm-hmm. trying to get better. And then finally, like I told my squad leader, hey, I want to go back out. And they all come in. They're like, you're not ready to go back out there, man. Just wait until you go home. You're you know you know you're gonna go home in like a week. It's like, no, I can't be in here anymore. I'm sorry, I just can't be in here. Okay, if you want to go back out, we'll just we'll just keep you on the gun, on gun in the Humvee. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. You know, my time comes, greatest feeling ever. You know, turn your, you know, I give my saw and they give me an M16. And I go home. Mm. You know, grateful that I didn't have to wait till August. Right. You know. Right. And I go home, man. And the one rule they gave us was like, just stay off the internet. You know, stay off MySpace back, you know, at that time. <laughs> yeah. You know, stay on MySpace at the time. And my dumbass didn't listen. I mean, I did until the, like probably the day before I was supposed to come back. I get on MySpace and I see that my squad leader, one of my team leaders, and the guy I consider my best friend, they all got killed. Mm. And along with our with our forward observer, and then our medic and my team leader, Sergeant Green, they made it. So I'm like, just shocked, man. Like, kind of feel bad for my family because, like, my last day home, I was just like, I can't tell them what the fuck just happened, you know? Mm-hmm. So then I come back, and when I left, Sergeant Green was still alive. And when I landed in Kuwait, he was he had already passed away. Mm. So I was like, shit, man. I was like, what the fuck am I coming back to? You know, and yeah, man, come back. Two new team leaders, you know, the army moves on, you know, two new team leaders, um, a new squad leader, and a few guys to add to our squad, you know, and they're wow. like. So you go home to decompress from being shot, right, in combat, and fucking come back, and the and majority, your, majority of your squad's gone. Gone. Wow, gone. man. You know. And I wasn't there for the hero flight, nothing, you know? So it's crazy because I don't know who it was, you know, but they told me and they were like, they're like, you could have, I mean, if you hadn't gotten shot, you'd be here or you wouldn't be here. You know, it's as simple as that, Mm -hmm. you know? There was a reason why you got hit when you did and there was a reason why Sergeant Prater sent you home and Sergeant Prater sent you home. Right. You know? Yeah, they were helping you not to rethink what would have, oh, could have. Yeah, yeah. And that fucks a lot of people up, man. The regret, like I go home and come back, and all my fucking squad's gone. Like, yeah. Then you start thinking, if I was there, maybe I could have fucking saved them. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, a hundred percent. You know, yeah. and and you know, I get back and you know, I hear that, um, you know, like one of our guys, the one responsible for saving, you know, Sergeant Green and our medic. Uh, Doc Leitner, you know, he jumped out the Humvee, man. He jumped out into the kill zone, tourniquets, you know, made it to where these guys were able to call their parents one more time, you know, and I come back and I could just see it, man. I could see it in his eyes. He was like, you know, you know, he said it. He's like, I'm fucking done, dude. I'm done playing Army. I just want to go home. He's like, I want to go home. And we're all telling him, like, just tell him, dude. Just tell him you want to go home. Don't send your ass home, dude. Mm. You know, he just like, you know, he was fighting with himself. Do I, do I don't, do I, do I don't, you know? And yeah. I think it was two weeks later, man. Out on patrol. A fucking sniper, man. Got coon. Uh. You know? You know, and like, and like, we had already known he was going to get a bronze star, you know, with, 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 with Valor because of what he did, you know? So, I mean, like, to us, we're like, damn, you know, like, you know, like, you're a bad motherfucker, you know, because he was the one that complained the most. He fucking hated the army from the day he got in, <laughs> you know, and and for him to react the way he did and do what he did and then, you know, just just be what everybody strives to be, you know, in the army. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I want to be that hero. And it's just like, you know, like, you know, like unfortunately he got to achieve that in the worst way possible you know but he still achieved it you know mm. 
he still fucking saved dudes' lives and, you know, like, he was that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And then for two weeks later, for us to get on some fucking bullshit mission, and that's it. Him to get hit with a sniper. For him to get with a fucking sniper, man. Fuck. That's rough, man. Now, when you're talking about him, you know, being, what, did he save some people or, or? Um, well, you, well, I, well, I mean, he kept, he kept, sorry, I mean. Or what was it? You're saying that you guys were like, oh, he's going to get a bronze star. What, oh, what, what, what was that that he did? Well, when, when all our dudes got hit, he, he, he was a gunner on the Humvee mm-hmm. and he jumped off from the gun. Mm. We ran down the Humvee and he checked on everybody. Oh, he was the one going and okay. Yeah, Sergeant Prater was dead, Arnold was dead, Sergeant Brown was dead, and um, our forward observer. Right, they were fuck. They man. were gone. All in the same fucking. So then he heard Sergeant Lightner, Sergeant Green. He heard them, mm. you know, and you know he applied tourniquets. You know, you know, got them stable enough, got them in. On top, you know, yeah. Sergeant Green died three days later, and I think uh, Doc Leitner died four days later. Mm. You know, damn, that's rough, man. Yeah. So, um, how long did you end up staying? How long was that deployment for you? Uh, 15 months, 15 fucking months, 15 months, man. You know, I turned 19 and 20 over there. Wow, yeah, holy shit, man. Yeah, um, so how long after you, you uh, got back from that deployment? Did you stay in the army? How much longer? Two months. Okay. Two months. And after a month, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I just stopped coming to work, you know, because I was like, well, I'm, you know, like, I wanted to stay in, but I couldn't do a push-up, you know, and I thought about reclassing a bunch, and I just, I couldn't swallow that pill, man. I couldn't swallow like, oh, yeah. fuck, you know, just not to be infantry anymore, you know, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't do um, it. Talk to me about uh, what what your transition was like. For you, you tra- transitioning back into the civilian world after being in fucking combat for 15 months and then two months, you're supposed to be a civilian again. God bless my parents, man, because it was just, I think they obviously didn't know what to do, right? They didn't know what to do, but. You know, they just, they did what they could to just keep me happy and stable, I guess. You know, like, you know, like, uh, I had a job, a good job. And, you know, like, my mom would just, you know, she would, she would let me smoke weed in the house like a freaking animal, you know. Like, you know, she would just, like, if I needed beer, she'd just go get me beer, you know. On top of her working all day, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, like my dad would do the same thing, you know, just like whatever they had to do to keep me level, they would do, you know, my brothers were just like, oh, well, let's just get drunk, you know, so I said, cool, you know, and and that's just what it was. It's just like a blur, I guess I would say like the first few months when I got back. And then I met my wife shortly after that, and, you know, I know she loves me, why she stayed so long, but if it was me, I would have been gone a long fucking time ago. Mm. Man, you know, like, you know, I was a, I was a shit husband, I was a shit dad, I mean, just everything, everything under the sun, you know, it just... I just fucked everything up, man. Everything up, I just, I would just, like, sand in my hands. I just fucked everything up, you know? And she would stay, and she would push me. She would stay, and she would push me, you know? And, you know, and she would help me keep everything from getting out, you know? She would clean up the messes, and my family didn't know anything, you know? Like, still, I, I feel like until this day, my family and my friends don't know any anything, you know? Don't know mm. any of the struggle. Mm-hmm. that I've been through or gone through, you know, it's just my wife, you know, my wife is, she's been my punching bag for so long, you know, and, you know, I'm grateful now where I'm at now, you know, because, you know, we had our fourth, our fourth uh, baby and my daughter and, you know, I was given him another chance to be a dad, mm-hmm. you know, with her and my other kids, they see the difference and I'm grateful they don't hold it against me, you know, like, 
you know, I'm a great husband, you know, I'm a great son, I'm a great friend, now, mm-hmm. you know, or before, I was like, fuck, that was so easy, mm-hmm. fuck you, you know, I don't care who you were, mm-hmm. you know, like, if I didn't like anything about you or any of that, just tighter your face, fuck you, mm-hmm. you know, I thought because I went to work and provided that was enough for society, right, that was, en- that was enough for me to give to you, mm-hmm. and that's it, you know. Did you ever uh, talk about uh, what you've been through uh, to your wife? Did you ever? Uh, I would say when I was drunk, I would. Mm -hmm. You know, like never sober, you know, which was, I think, a big part of it. You know, like a big, big part of it was just that I I was never vulnerable when I was, when I wasn't sober. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just when I'd get drunk. I think it was more like I'd be talking to the ether and she just was there listening, mm. you know, but it was never directly like, oh, you know, you know, you know, like, this is why I'm fucked up. You know, this yeah. is what, you know, like, this is what killed me. You know, the whole going home and then them dying and me coming back, like, that was the hardest shit to kick, mm. you know, like, it was like, well, why did I get shot? You know, like, why did I, why did I have to go home and be with my family the day they were fucking, you know, like I was at home hugging my mom the day they got killed. You know, and it was just um, tough pill to swallow, mm. you know. It was... Well, it sounds like you have a really good wife, man, because, you know, it's easy to fucking get a divorce. You know, it's easy to run away from things and stuff, and it sounds like she's really sticking by your side. Oh, 100%. Her best to support you. 100%, man. Like, you know, for a long time, she was a dad and a mom, unfortunately. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I don't know what I got, what I would get my kids for Christmas, for their birthdays. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. I was, like, as long as I was drunk, high, yeah. you know, cool. You know, just, and like, what can she say? Yeah. You know? I mean. Did you, uh, did you ever seek help? Um, I would go to meetings at the VA. I would. But I would never talk about it. And it was more just listening, trying to like piece together like what these guys were doing, but it was never any success stories, mm-hmm. which is which is which is what I think it ended up being like counterproductive, mm-hmm. you know? Like it was never like, oh hey that guy's doing okay and he's doing this. No, it was always just like, well his life's a shit show, but I'm not as bad as him. So as long as I don't get to his point, then I'll be okay, mm. you know? Like type of type of thing, and then. It seemed like when I was finally like getting to that point where I'm like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta do something. Then the VA just cut all that shit. Mm. Like you're just gonna go to a psychiatrist, get meds, and that's it. Mm. You know, and I think it was the rot, them just being like, okay, the vet center, which has nothing to do with the VA, right? Which is private funded or whatever it is, right? They're doing more for vets, so let's just throw all that shit on them. Right. Like you have people like yourself, you know, like other companies or other organizations, they're doing more for veterans. So let's just let them carry that fucking load. Right. right? Let's not do shit about these guys. You know, let them find it elsewhere. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel personally. You know, like the VA don't do shit for me. You know, like. It's it's elsewhere. Right. 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 You know, like it's people like you reaching out, you know, you know, it's it's you. You meet guys. At a car show, at a function, or at a barbecue. Oh, hey, I have a vet group. They meet every other Sunday for barbecue. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know that's like, awesome. Yeah, that, that's I mean, a big fucking deal, right? Yeah, but it's the only deal right. that we have as veterans. Mm-hmm. You know, is each other, right? Like we have our community, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm so grateful that I have Will that's in LA, and I, and then I have my buddy Diaz that's in San Diego. Right, because I have two guys that I served with, that shed blood with, I cried tears with, we lost together, right? And now we're all still in contact, raising together. You know, we're still we're still brothers. You know, mm-hmm. we're still feeding each other what we need. You know, like my dad passed away in February, and all my army buddies we donated right to help leave my dad to rest. Mm-hmm. You know, Will was at my dad's funeral. Wow. You know, so it's just like, that's all we got, man. Yeah. You know, you know? Yeah. Um, how are you doing now? 
Um, it's great, man. You know, really, really like. Awesome. Yeah, it's just, you know, I have, like I said, I'm a, I'm a great dad. I'm a great husband. I'm a great son, you know, and I don't have any more regrets, mm, you good. know. It happened, it happened, you know. I miss them all dearly, but there was nothing I could have done. Yeah. You know, there was nothing that I could have done, you know. Right. I was a private. Like, what can I do? Mm-hmm. You know, like, we all joined. We all knew the risk. We all knew the possibility of what was going to happen. And I can tell you with the certainty in my heart, those guys died doing what they love. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they wanted to be there. They wanted the fight. They, they, they just, they embodied the army. Mm-hmm. I can tell you with assurance I wasn't there for those reasons mm. you know I had to get out of a shitty situation but while I was there I was going to do my best yeah you know but I I wasn't like those guys right. you know I got patriotic afterwards of course you know yeah but a lot of us do yeah a lot of us fucking are complaining while we're in like oh, get, get, get me out of this 100%. fucking shit show and then years later after you get out you're like I'm fucking proud of it, uh, what we did you know Fuck yeah um is there anything specific that you do now to, 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 to keep you stable, you know, to, to, you know, to be where you're at right now, doing good, feeling great, good dad, son, good husband? Is there anything specific that you do to stay on that level? Yeah. I, first and foremost, I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but get a job. Mm-hmm. You know, a job, man. I mean, that shit will that shit'll keep you straight. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, it'll keep you straighter than, you know, because I feel like you can't really find a good support system unless you're, you know, you're, you know, like you're pretty straightforward, you know, like walking like some direction, Mm -hmm. you know, and whenever guys call me, they're doing bad. I'm like, I'm like, well, what are you doing with yourself? You know, you know, I'm like, I'm like, get a job, bro. We'll get a part time job, Mm -hmm. you know, go do that. And then, you know, like you build on that, you know, like. After that, I have my wife, I have my family, you know, and then I have a hobby, man. Mm. You know, I fucking, I've always had old cars. My dad raised us on old cars. Nice. You know, it's nothing like wrenching on a car all morning, you take it out, you break down, all that shit all over again. You know, you might be angry, but then you're driving home and you're like, cool, you know, like yeah. it's, it's a hobby no matter what it is, you nice. know, like Will is a fucking exercise machine yeah. you know like you know like you see the you see the the brightness in his eyes you know you see the you look past the pain you look past the hurt you look past everything he's such a fucking positive guy you know my buddy diaz he he loves the lord and he loves his family and talking to him it's just like yeah dude you know what thank you got mm. you i'm good you know let's go yeah. You know, t- to me, it's like, it's nothing like walking outside and you got a flat tire on that motherfucker. Right. You know, cool. Brakes are bleeding. Oil's leaking. You're like, well, there's four hours of my day right now, mm-hmm. you know, having to fucking go under there, you know, and do what I got to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just. Wow. Well, awesome, man. Um, we're getting ready to wrap it up. Time fuck goes by quick. Yeah. Huh? It does. Um, uh, I always like to give uh, everybody the opportunity for any last words, man, before we cut the tape. Um, I mean, you just gave some great fucking yeah. advice already. So um, I just hate to cut people off if, you know, yeah. if, if you have something else to get in. But if not, man, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, just you matter. We all matter, man. We're all here, you know. Fuck. I, I feel like even if you were a shitbag in the army, I mean, you still, you know, if you call me, I'll answer. Mm. I'll give you some shit, but that's it, you know. Somebody's going to be there, man, you know. Like, you can spot a veteran a mile away, man. Yeah. You know, hey, what's up, man, you know. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like, what was your unit? Where'd you serve? This and that. And before you know it, you're chopping it up, and you're like, oh, hey, hey, you know what? Here's my Instagram. Here's my number. Here's something, mm. you know. You know, yeah. like, I met you through, you know, the grapevine, and here I am. Yeah. You know, and it just... That's it, man. Yeah. You know, we just got to show love to each other. We're vets. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, Thanks for being here, Raymond. Uh, It's much, much appreciated, um, you know, having the courage to take this fucking seat. It takes a lot of fucking balls, man. Um, 
or for women, whatever that may be. But <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of fucking courage is my yeah, point. Yeah, exactly, hundred so, percent. Thanks a lot, brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone. Write my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back.